Okay, good. Yeah, I'm just having a tea right now to get some caffeine in me. Great. What kind of tea are you drinking? Uh, just a regular, like, Tetley tea. Remind me of back home. Yeah. I've been drinking more green tea lately to get my metabolism going, but, you know. Are you still currently in Ohio, I believe? Yeah, yeah. I'm still in Ohio. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yep. Yeah, uh, so I'm Jack Saint. I am, I guess, a YouTuber. I do uh, a lot of media analysis type stuff, uh, talking about movies and culture and politics and, I guess, internet memes. And you've been doing the YouTube thing for a while now, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. It's been going on a good half a year now, maybe coming up to, yeah, just over half half a year. Uh, things have been going pretty well. People seem to be picking up on the stuff, which is, you know, really nice. And what inspired you to get started in this video essay era of your career? Um, so... Like a lot of people, I tend to get a lot of my entertainment from places like YouTube now. Like, I don't have a cable subscription or anything. Like, if I want some entertainment in the afternoon, I'll be watching YouTube videos. And nowadays, a lot of the time, what pops up will be stuff like video essays, talking about movies and stuff, and games. So that's all, that's just sort of what I consume. And I was like, man, I kind of have some things to say about various things. And, you know, I just figured, oh, well, I, I, I'm going through the immigration process. I kind of have a little bit more time let's talk about some stuff and in regards to your social political commentary would you say that's more influence from where you're from um the climate there or more universal worldly i guess it's a variety of things i would say generally more universal like uh, you know i sort of live on the internet as a lot of people do increasingly where it's like looking at the media landscape as a whole so so i guess it's more universal um you know when people are talking about media that usually there's a wider scope to it and out of all the videos so far which has garnered the biggest response for whether that's negative or positive um so i think so far it's one where i was talking about the disney movie sky high I was sort of talking about um, the there's like some weird political undertones to that movie if you read it a certain way. It's like this odd hierarchical structure to this like little superhero fantasy family film, and uh, that that's got a variety of responses. Like I, I know a lot of people that were like, "That's interesting." Like a new a new lens to watch this film and see these political ramifications of it. But obviously, a lot of people that weren't so happy because they just you know, want to enjoy a fun family film without having to think about anything else, right? Yeah, for sure. But mm. you're quite the thinker, so it kind of makes sense <laughs> that you kind of made a connection there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think that's part of what I really like about where video essay, media analysis type stuff is going nowadays. I think it was very, uh, I guess, consumer focused before. It was just like, is this good? Is this bad? Is this worth you spending your money on it? Whereas now you're getting a lot more stuff that's talking about, you know, different angles to a work, like the feminist side or, you know, th things of that nature. And do you have any inspirations? Um, yeah, I guess sort of uh, channels like Lindsay Ellis, um, who's done a lot of similar work analyzing uh, movies from a wide variety of angles. Um, I know H Bomber Guy is another YouTube channel that talks about that kind of thing. Um, outside of that, there is a, uh, I forget, oh God, I forget the name right now. There was a, the guy, a guy who did an old series called Ways of Seeing. Oh, is it jo John Berger, I think, perhaps? Anyway, he, he sort of introduced the topic like decades ago, discussing like ways of which to view art and media. And I always found that really interesting, just like different ways to look at things rather than just do I like this or do I dislike this? And do you think you'll venture out into something a bit more creative, a bit more narrative based oh yeah absolutely uh my main interest in in fact is more sort of creative writing i produced a animated pilot or more like an animatic pilot which is more like a storyboard um about march time but you know how it is it's hard when you have like an original thing to put out there and you're not a big name so uh i would like to move more into that kind of thing but it's you know it, you have to make a name for yourself nowadays before you can really get into that and you've done animation before based on your old videos from a few years ago. 
Yeah, yeah, I did uh, little animations based on the Giant Bomb website, uh, video game review site. The, uh, they have a popular podcast. I did some little cute animations of that because animations always something I've loved and people enjoyed those. But I, I guess now I would like to transition into something that's more sort of personal and fulfilling in that way rather than just, you know, reproducing other people's work. Let's talk about how you became the creator you are today. What events or your, let's say, living has led up to, I guess, your personality at the moment? Um, so I guess if you like really go back far enough, uh, when I was growing up, it was a uh, to a single mom. Uh, we were in a fairly poor neighborhood. And for the first 18 years of my life, that was kind of the life I led. And uh, in the UK, I'm not sure if it is, it might be in the, I think it is in the US, but especially in the UK, there's a big thing about single mothers and how they're basically like to blame for everything. And it was one of those interesting things where a lot of media, be it news media or just like popular media, would follow on this sort of stereotype of like the single mother and they're breeding all the criminals and the ne'er-do-wells in society. And I guess that's the first thing that sort of made me feel a little bit alienated and made me think about the way that we perceive different groups in society. And I guess from there, I've always thought about that stuff or like wanted to perceive more lenses to that kind of thing. And did the media you, uh, you consume during that time kind of correlate with that kind of mentality? Uh, to a certain extent. I, I mean, I've certainly watched a lot of just sort of I guess what you might call more mindless entertainment at the time, just like stuff stuff that I enjoyed watching, you know, be it uh, superhero movies or like fantasy movies or like Space Jam or Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> but, you know, as I've gone through, you, you can see these odd political aspects to things that seem like harmless entertainment. Again, like that Sky High video that kind of took off. Space Jam. All right. What's uh, what's your take on Space Jam? <laughs> oh God, uh, I, I can't say anything too much about it right now. I, I might I might do a video on it in the future. I, I guess I, I guess I'm more saying that in theory you could probably look at that through a lot of different lenses. Not necessarily that I have developed thoughts on that right now. I challenge anyone in the audience if they have anything to say about Space Jam to think on it and make their own video essay on it. Has there been an event where you bumped into a stranger or, or you've talked to a stranger and it's been a memory that you've had? Um, I mean, definitely not so much strangers because, you know, I'm a little bit of an introverted person. I don't tend to make conversation with strangers as much. But, you know, conversations I've had in college definitely, like a lot of people, kind of expanded my thinking on a lot of things, you know. When you're kind of younger, thinking about politics and media, it's a lot more instinctual. It's just like, I don't like this thing. I I, dis I, I like this thing. You know, the more conversations you have with people, I definitely find um, expands my thoughts to understand many different perspectives for which you can enjoy different things. Definitely. And mm. was there um, anything in college that you would say was particularly important to you? Um, so I guess the thing for me is growing up when I was at school, at least the neighborhood I was in, it was like very, you know, very white. It was, it was the, the demographics of my area were all very similar. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of straight, straight white cis people, um, a lot of, you know, uh, primarily dudes that I was hanging out with. So when I went to college, it was a nice refresher to see multiple different, uh, to, to talk with multiple different groups in a way that I wasn't really given access to when I was growing up, and that that was very eye-opening. Yeah, you really do strive for inclusivity in your videos, uh, particularly talking about the ones regarding LGBTQ plus um, representation and animation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, in school, I think there was, at least as far as I know, there was like one gay guy in my entire year group and I'd never met a transgender person even until I'd been to college. Um, that was something that the internet was also great for, was being able to make a lot of friends from those communities so that I could understand their perspective more, so that I could kind of understand their grievances a little bit more. Um, and yeah, I, I really, I'm very grateful for that opportunity to have that. Which forums did you use to lurk on? 
Oh man, so it used to be just a lot of uh, video game forums or animation forums. I was on the Giant Bomb forums for a little while, um, and then I think NeoGaf I used to hang out in a little bit. I, I, I wanted to go on, there was something awful which was pretty popular, but I think you had to pay for that, and I was I was too young at the time, so I was like, oh, I'm not going to pay to go on a forum. <laughs> but, you know, now it's a lot of Twitter and places like that. And how is your Twitter consumption, or which kind of people do you usually follow? Um, so like I say, it's, it's a lot of create fellow creators that I check up on. Like, you know, you got, um, again, the, the people that I admire and follow, like Lindsay Ellis, Dan Olson, H Bomber Guy, ContraPoints, and then fellow creators like Peter Coffin, who also talks about, you know, the political lenses of entertainment or culture. Um, and yeah, a lot of people like that. Bad Mouse is another channel that I'm a big fan of, and I follow them on Twitter. I probably use Twitter a bit too much, but, you know, it's good for keeping in touch with a lot of different people. And ContraPoints in particular, I've noticed you two kind of have a very similar editing style. Would you say um, you're kind of influenced by that to some degree? Um, yeah, absolutely to some respect. I I think that ContraPoints has been very influential in giving uh, more leftist perspectives kind of an aesthetic with which to work from. Like, if you go back a few years, most people who were talking about things like with video essays, it was a lot of, I'm on a webcam just talking to the camera and then there'll be video clips that will pop up. I think there's a little bit more, uh, for lack of a better word, art to it nowadays. Um, a lot more shoestring budget, you know, nice aesthetics to things um, that makes YouTube, I think, a more enjoyable experience for a lot of people. And in three words, what aesthetic are you trying to capture with your video or personality? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, hmm. I guess kind of I would like to say uh, inclusive, engaging, and, and a warm. I don't want to seem kind of bitter in my work. Uh, I like it to feel more... Just like, hey, well, welcome to this video. Let's sit down and have a chat type thing. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I, I definitely see that. Now let's take us into a day in the life of Jack Saint. How is your morning? How? What gets you up at in the morning? Um, well, as it stands right now, uh, I'm trying to keep a decent uh, sleep schedule. The, the thing is, is as I go through the immigration process, obviously I, I can't hold down a specific full-time job. Um, so it's like I have to instruct myself to make sure I get up at a certain time. Or it used to be that I would get up really late, like, you know, sometime in the midday and then stay up way too late to make up for that, you know, working on videos and whatnot. But with the new year, I'm trying to change things up, get up at like, you know, seven, seven or so, and then have a cup of coffee and get going on writing a script or editing or just trying to be productive in some specific structured way. And that goes until the late night? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to, to not do that so much. I remember the last few videos I was doing, I was up until maybe 5 a.m. the day I was about to put the video up. And then I would, and then I would hit export and then I would have a few hours for it to export and then I would upload. So now I'm trying to tell myself, okay, if it's like 2 a.m., I should probably just go to bed. And s since you've been in the U.S. for a bit now, how would you say that's different from where you're from originally? Uh, well, the food's better for the most part. You get more choices in terms of the food, at least. Um, I, I enjoy being in the U.S. You know, there's... A there's definitely a different feel to it. I will say that one of the downsides to being in the US is medical costs, because <laughs> lately I've been having to get vaccinations and stuff in preparation for my uh, immigration. And it's weird how when I was back in the UK, it was just like, oh, it's time for me to get a vaccination. I'll just go ahead and do that. Whereas now it's like, oh, yeah, do you have $100 and for each vaccination? And so, you know, free, me free health care would be good in the US. <laughs> but other than that, I enjoy it. Yeah, it's definitely a problem over here as well. Um, well, I'm also in the U.S., but I'm talking more particularly in California. Right, right. What kind of foods would you say made you go like, wow, this is pretty great? Uh, I mean, I guess the big one is it's basically impossible to get good Mexican food in the U.K. Like, I'm sure somebody will say that there's some place 
where there's some good Mexican restaurants in the UK. But for the most part, it was very difficult. Um, but you know, when you're here, there's there's a bunch of good Mexican places, and you know, so you tend to find a lot of good sushi places too. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of stuff I like around here. And when you go to a Mexican restaurant, what's your preferred option? Oh well, uh, I guess fish tacos. I've been trying to go vegetarian, but I, you know, I sneak some fish in there occasionally. So yeah, fish tacos are the ones for me. And your choice in going vegetarian, what made you want to start that? Um, I, I guess it's a little bit shallow, but my original reasoning was literally just, I don't really like pork that much. I'm not that into beef, although I like a good steak. So it, it wasn't that difficult for me, but, uh, you know, on a wider scale, it was just the fact that I didn't really feel like supporting this industry anymore. But I also uh, wouldn't hold it against anyone who doesn't want to go vegetarian or vegan or anything. I mean, it's like carton of soy milk in our neighborhood at this point is getting up to like 450 and you know i can get a huge ga- a huge thing of regular milk for like a dollar 50 so it's not exactly cheap in a lot of areas now let's talk about the meme of the week which would be donald trump buying hamburgers for a football team <laughs> after they won a championship do you have any thoughts on that um, I mean, I guess it isn't th- that big a deal. Like the government is shut down, so I guess they had to do something. I guess the thing that has made me laugh is seeing various uh, commentators, particularly conservative commentators, obviously, you know, saying how nice. Like you, you're all trying to shame Trump, but how nice of him to go out of his way to spend all this money on this fast food for people when most of it is McDonald's burgers. You know, if he got 300 hamburgers for these people, that cost him about three hundred dollars so you know it's not exactly breaking the bank for him but i don't think it's too huge a a thing it's just it is a little bit silly what has been on your mind currently in the political atmosphere at the moment um i I guess it's kind of uh we're kind of building up to the next election and i think what we really need to do is for me at least i've been worrying about the idea of making things too aesthetic or talking about it's, it's like what trump was doing during the election you know he was talking about how we just need to make america great again no real specific things he was talking about i think this government has had many failings and talking specifically about those failings and spreading that around like there are many people who don't even seem to be aware that the government you know has been shut down for weeks you know i think talking more about specific issues rather than just broad ideas would probably be good in the lead up to that and that's kind of what's been worrying me lately and one topic i'm surprised you haven't touched upon because i'm i think you'll probably have something to say um it's in music in particular people supporting problematic artists which are people who you know have done something in the past that is morally objectively you know, it's terrible. And I've watched a few video essays in regards to people saying that a lot of people criticize mostly people of color when it comes to these allegations. And there's not much media uh, presence in regard to problematic, you know, white people who have done similar things. Do you have any sort of perspective on that? Yeah, absolutely. It was something that I was worried about when I, I did my video about the James Gunn thing about a year ago. For anyone who doesn't know, that was the director of Guardians of the Galaxy, who was uh, unceremoniously fired from his position due to some fairly problematic jokes he had made uh, about a decade ago. And my concern was when we have these situations where we just sort of cut people out of the entertainment industry over things they may have said a decade ago, that can come back around to people of color where They'll have, they'll have said something like a decade ago and they'll particularly be, be picked out by these kind of far writers or alt writers who specifically want to see them deplatformed but want to seem as if they're doing it the right way. Um, so pretty much immediately after the James Gunn thing, uh, Trevor Noah had that happen to him. And that's something that I'm very much worried about nowadays. I think the mechanisms for calling people out when they've done a bad thing are important because you know, otherwise people can do these, these uh, not, not very nice things and n- never get called out for it. But um, from the other aspect, I, I want to be careful about that kind of thing because you can have people that wind up using these mechanisms disingenuously. 
to to get people outed who they just personally don't like, whether that be because of you know their political opinions or just you know the color of their skin. Well, thanks, Jack. That's all the time we've had. But all oh, right, thanks yeah. so much for speaking with me. Yeah, for sure. That was uh, that was a good conversation there, and I can't wait for your next videos. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much for inviting me to this. It's good to have a chat. I'm happy to be on any any time to have a chat. Would you like to plug in any of your social media or channels? Uh, sure. So my YouTube would be uh, Jack Saint slash Lacking Saint. You should be able to find that just by looking it up. Um, I've got videos like one about Sky High. I've got one about Alice in Wonderland. Um, uh, a few about that NPC meme from a few years ago. Or sorry, not from a few years ago. A few months ago. <laughs> or even a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm also on Twitter at Lacking Saint, um, and I have a Patreon also, Lacking Saint, if anyone wants to chip in a few bucks and help me produce my work. Hope you have a good day. Thanks, you too. Have a good one.